Hello friends and uh, I'd like to share with you something today from this beautiful place which is the park nearby a house and um, in prayer today was when I was walking and praying with uh, to God I had received some wonderful revelation of the Word of God for you and I'd like to share that with you first of all I'd like to talk about Enoch Enoch lived in a time of the world that was reconstructing, actually. And the devil was already behaving rudely in this world. And uh, later on, we know that the giants, the fallen angels, they begin to encounter with the daughters of men. And the Nephilim, the giants, they were born out of them. I'm not, I'm not going to go into this. Uh, scenario. I'm not going to go into this message, but I'd like to pay attention to Enoch, his life first. I would say that he was the only one in this entire world at that time that was walking with God. He had no church, he had no leadership, he had no Bible. He had no encouragement but God himself. And moreover, it is interesting to understand that uh, his books that he wrote, a couple of chapters, maybe over 100 chapters, something like that, were only found in late 60s. They were found in 60s. And now we begin to realize that Enoch was talking about Jesus, second coming of Christ, about his redemptive power, and about the last days. So we're talking about somewhere between three to four hundred years after God has created the heavens and the earth. So let me read the scriptures to you. And it says in chapter 5 of the book of Genesis, verse 21, it says, and Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. Methuselah, by the way, his son was living the longest on this earth. He almost made it to a thousand years of lifespan in his, in, in, in his lifetime. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And it says again, repeats itself in verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. It is an interesting point that I'd like to bring to you as God was speaking to me about the way we walk with God. How do we walk with God and what is the difference between walking with God in Enoch's time and uh, actually the time that we are living today? There is no difference. There is no difference. God wants us to walk with Him regardless. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All we need to do is to actually, is to actually learn from the way He was walking with God. Again, as I was um, walking in prayer today and talking to God, the Lord showed me some powerful things that we need to know. The Bible says that God dwells in secret places. And we must understand these secret places, they are not hidden from us. They are given to us. And God wants us to know these secret places. And why did God create the secret places between us and Him? It's very important to understand. God is calling and inviting everybody to come to Him. Everybody. But here's the problem that not everybody is going ahead and uh, paying the price and reaching the point in their life when they would walk with God in that secret place. There's a lot of people that go into church today and they are church goers but they are all in the first stage of walking with God. Those that are born again, they entered 
into the kingdom of God. They are in God's palace, I would say. They are in God's palace. But who is pressing on to be in the secret place with the Most High God? Who is that person? Like I said before, God is inviting everybody to get there. But my concern is, will this message encourage you up to the point that you will do what I share with you today? There's a lot of encouraging messages today be here through media. A lot of people, a lot of people, they get encouraged by the messages today, but who is applying them to their life? And what God was speaking to me is very serious. And I was thinking about myself. I want to get to the place of that secret place with God. You cannot get there by faith alone. It has to be that you have to pursue and it has to be that you have to actually move with God forward. Can I ask you this question? Do you know the book of Esther? Well, if you do, remember what happened to Esther Hadassah. She was brought into the palace, but she was making to be ready for a year to present yourself before the king. Why? Because, friends, when you come into the palace of God, it doesn't mean that we just walk boldly to the place where God is, and uh, no matter what, we are going just to be in the presence of God at any time we want. Yes, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne. But what is the throne of God? It's not just where God sits and you come so close to the throne of God and you enjoy His presence. No, God wants us to enjoy His presence and to be in His presence alone, each and every one of us alone. Because God has called us separately to Himself. You and I are called to be with God separately. And each and every one of us have a different approach to God absolutely different approach every one of us are invited to God's palace but to get closer to the king and to get favor from him we must strive to do not everybody that is coming to church is actually getting to that place because they don't God spoke to me he says people don't pursue me the way they should and what that is you have to live a separate life. We cannot mix the world and our life, spiritual life with God and expect ourselves to enter into God's presence. No, it has to be you and God. Not even people, not even people. You have to be alone. You have to leave the people alone. You have to have leave the family alone. You have to be by yourself pursuing the place of God like Esther did and she was getting to be prepared each and every day months after months but this is an example to us that we personally must understand as Enoch was walking with God all alone all by himself his life was separated nothing was bothering him in this world Nothing was actually uh, disturbing his relationship with God. Nothing. Nothing. And this is what it means to walk with God. It means you alone. You cannot bring your wife or children or your neighbors or anybody with you to the presence of God. You can bring them to Jesus. But everybody has to come to the presence of God on their own effort. On their own. And a lot of people that are sitting in churches today are believers. Like I said already, they are in the palace, but they are not proceeding to enter into the king's chamber. Chamber, when you spend time with God alone. That is very important point. And I was praying today and I was crying to God and saying, Lord, I want to separate my life even more. I want to separate myself even more because nobody will bring me there. I cannot depend on my leadership. 
I cannot depend on our teachers. I cannot depend on anybody. It's only your personal will and desire that can bring you there alone. And you have to separate your life. Remember, in order for us to be in the presence of God daily, we have to separate our life. We have to walk by the Word of God. As God said to Joshua, he says, remember that you are going to defeat many nations, many nations that are not pleasing me. So keep your eyes on my word. Keep your eyes on me. Let nothing, let no people take your joy away from me. Let nobody steps between me and you, our relationship, nobody, because that will distract you and remember, we are flesh. Some are walking more by the Spirit than the others. Some are walking more by the flesh. And you might have some relatives. You might have some people around you, friends or whoever, that are walking by the flesh. That will pull you down. The flesh and the Spirit are enmity with, with God. You have to separate yourself with God. You have to walk by the Spirit. You have to choose carefully your friends. You have to choose carefully the programs, the things, the shows that you watch it. You have to choose carefully what you're listening, what you're reading, what you're thinking, what you're talking about. Separate yourself. Because without this separation, we, will, we cannot make a next step into that progress to enter into God's chambers. I was meditating on this and I got on fire by thinking about this, by thinking about this. So it's not only prayer, it's not only fasting, it is also our personal separation and desire, making ourselves a goal. I want to make it there. I want to come to the chambers of my Savior, of my Master. I want to be there. And again, I'm telling you this, nobody will be able to bring you there. Nobody will be able, able to bring you there. Do you remember when Jesus was walking with his disciples? When he would pray, he would be alone because he didn't want any hindrance from anybody. They were asking more questions that they would be praying. The only time when Jesus asked them to pray is in the Garden of Gethsemane, is to be with somebody so that they may support Him and stand with Him. Even in, those, in that time, neither one of them could. They fell asleep. But Jesus made a decision that He is going to separate Himself from every flesh. Though He was ministering to flesh every day, ministering to people, feeding people, yet His personal life was totally, completely separated and no flesh was able to interfere. My friends, in this short teachings, I want to encourage you today. Make a step. If you understand what I say, cut it with your spirit. Cut it with your heart. And don't stop. A lot of people begin and go, but then they stop. Something's choking them. But pray that God will give you fire and desire to go all the way until you will totally and completely separate yourself from everything, detach yourself from this life, from this sinful world, from any flesh, and from any wrong attachments and hindrances that are in your life. Only then you will be able to enter into that marvelous, intimate relationship with God. This is what I wanted to share with you. And I believe that is very important point and teaching. Now, remember, look at this video again. Look through this again. And what I'm giving you today, what I have received from heaven, and this is very practical thing that God is giving you today to enter into His presence. If you need more information, call us, write to us, and thank you for standing with us, spiritually and financially. God bless you, and may God of peace, God of shalom, enter into your life today and lead you all the way to His presence. Bye-bye.